Hello. Oh, hello. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Are you are you um seeing us? We can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I can us. see you. You can oh. see me? Okay. It's yeah, you can hear me, but you can't see me. Yes, I can't see you. We definitely want to see you, though. <laughs> uh, oh, let me try. Let me keep trying. Um, I see my picture on the screen, but it's paused. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It says it's connecting on one side, but anyway, we can hear you. How are you? I seem to have lost it. Yep, this is one of the challenges of doing lives on the continent. Sometimes. Hey Stephanie. Hello, you're back. Can you see yeah, us? Can you, yeah, sure, I can see you. Can you see me? No, not at all. Not at all. Oh. I'm not sure why, but we'll keep talking to you until sure. we sort that out. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you very much, Stephanie. You want me to try again so you can see me? Well, okay. I mean, we, we can do. Sure, why not? Uh, it would be great to see you and uh, connect with you in that way. But if it doesn't work, we'll just stick with the audio. But try once more. So yes, let's um, try to get Bobby Wine back on. <coughs> so while we're waiting, um, yes, someone said that in the comments that they haven't seen a lot of news about the pandemic. We have been reporting some, but you know, it's just with cases in in Italy, in Spain, in New York, be hundreds of deaths per day. We're not seeing those numbers in Africa. So um, the focus is on those places right now in the news. And we pray that it really doesn't get that bad here in Africa. But we're, we're trying to bring you the news via mediums such as this, via our website, also um, by CNN uh, International. So if you tune in, we are reporting about some of the issues in Africa, it's not as prevalent, so the focus is not intensely on Africa right now. So we pray that those cases don't and numbers of deaths don't rise so uh, exponentially. Well, we'll just go with audio if we can with this. Uh, tech, tech is not on our side today, but then that's the perils of live reporting. Hello, Bobby, can you hear us? Hey Stephanie, can you can you see me now? I can't see you, but we'll just have to settle for hearing your voice and, and talking to you. Sure, let's talk then. Um, unfortunately, I it must be something to do with the network, but I can hear, sure. I can see and hear you. Okay, fine. We'll we'll go with the audio uh, conversation. That's totally fine. Um, so where where are you? Where are you calling us from? Um, I'm home. Where is home? Can you hear me? Let's see. We seem to be having connection issues. Well, we'll try one last time with everyone. If we don't get it back, then we'll definitely try and get it back again. Um, and then we'll go to Temi. Temi is uh, an amazing hey, young woman. Oh, hey, you're back. Hello. Hey, Stephanie. I'm sorry I keep dropping off. Ah, uh, that's such a shame. And that's definitely mm. connection issues. Well, so we'll have a chat with you as long as we can um, and try to get a few uh, questions in. So can you mm. give us a quick update about what is going on in Uganda? Well, um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has had its own toll in Uganda um, in different ways. Yes, uh, we continue to thank uh, the health workers because uh, they, they Come on, this network is now messing up everything. Come on. 
Come on. Network is missing up everything. Here we are streaming live and as well as Instagram. For this lady and as well as my president's network. Oh my goodness. Guys, today it's unfortunate, the network is messing up everything. But let's just keep waiting. Uh huh. Like I was saying, uh, people continue to suffer. Um, we have a population that is poor in some parts of Uganda. The poverty rates are as much as uh, 84 percent, for example, in Karamoja. So, because many people work from hand to mouth, and uh, the lockdown has been ongoing for a while, recently extended, uh, people are stranded. Recently, some women went to the police with their children demanding to be arrested, well knowing that once somebody is under police custody, they are fed. So that is an effect uh, with our people. Of course, uh, even the human rights issue continues to be terrible as uh, in Uganda, the authorities tend to have it as an opportunity, you know, to um, crack down on the same. But other than that, still the people of Uganda, just like many other people of Africa, have taken caution of this, they've taken importance of uh, the fight against the COVID-19, uh, they are washing their hands, they are practicing social distancing whenever they can. Right. Wow. So, just to get it straight, people are so hungry that they are asking the police to arrest them so they can get something to eat. Is that right? Yeah, sure. People are so hungry that uh, they are asking the police to arrest them so they can be fed in custody. And this comes after uh, this comes after the president of Uganda outlawed anybody who wants to give assistance to their neighbor. In Uganda, if you are caught giving food to your neighbor, you are charged with attempted murder. That is according to the president of Uganda. And that has uh, uh, become a big challenge to many of us who want to share the little we have with our neighbors. So you can't actually give food and, and do fundraising for, for your neighbours and, and your countrymen? Yeah, sure. As we speak now, my fellow member of parliament, Honorable Francis Sake, who represents Mutiana uh, Municipality, is in, uh, is in detention. He was badly tortured and his crime was offering food relief to his constituents. So wow. that's a challenge on the side of leadership uh, amid this COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. So you've um, spoken out uh, in the past about the state of the healthcare in Uganda and and you know how poor this, this healthcare is in the country, particularly when faced with such crisis. What what I mean, what can you tell us? You know, how many ventilators are there, for example, in Uganda? Do you know? And also, what um, you know, what situation is with intensive care units and how how. Uh, you know, how is Uganda able to cope if the numbers of cases rise significantly? Well, um, we are all living under fear should the coronavirus cases uh, rise significantly. Uh, Uganda in particular has an ailing healthcare system. And indeed, uh, myself and many other leaders have been calling upon the government to invest in the healthcare system. Unfortunately, most of our elite class 
have been getting their uh, health care uh, attention from outside Uganda. That uh, caused the continued growth in the health care system. Uh, it is almost um, satisfying to see that we are all stuck in Uganda and we are all going to face uh, the same ailing health care system. And it's even almost amusing to see that uh, the coronavirus at, uh, affects uh, the elderly much more. Who are the majority in our ruling elite? And these are the people that have been ignoring the healthcare system. However, still it is our call to the government of Uganda and to the governments around Africa to uh, prioritize healthcare, to prioritize health. Uh, right now in Uganda, uh, we just passed over a trillion Uganda shillings, but not even half of that uh, has gone to the healthcare. We believe that it is time now to. Um, capitalize our energies and our efforts and all our focus on the healthcare system so we can be able to help the common people but at the same time help the elite. So but you, you're a lawmaker, you're a politician in, in the country. What would you do differently or what efforts are you making to improve that healthcare system? Unfortunately, uh, in the hands of the president, it is not the rule of law that uh, that functions in Uganda, but it is ruled by law. Otherwise, if it was uh, the rule of law, you will not find a member of parliament in detention today for uh, extending um, food relief to his constituents. Uh, we continue to sensitize the people of Uganda, calling upon them to take uh, charge of their country so that all decisions that are being made are being made in the benefit of the people. I sit in the same parliament that while the rest of the leaders are cutting their salaries uh, to make sure all that money goes to the relief of their people, in our own parliament, uh, members of parliament are uh, awarded each of themselves 20 million shillings to go through this situation. So. Um, many times I disagree with the parliament that I sit in because it comes off as an important talk show. So you're, you're a bit of a lone voice in a sea of sycophants, is that what you mean? I'm not alone, I must say. The, there are many legislators that are standing with us and even the people of Uganda. It's just unfortunately uh, the ruling party has very many members of parliament and it is clear that many of them were rigged into the parliament, which parliament is only a rubber stamp of what President Museveni wants. Right. So um, we saw a video of uh, President Museveni working out, uh, doing press ups in his, in his office recently. And um, mm -hmm. you know, he was urging Ugandans to stay at home. What did you make of that video when, when you saw it? <laughs> well, are you still seeing me? Yes, yes. Well, okay. I can't see great, great. Sure. Um, it is nice. It, it's interesting to see the head of state encouraging uh, Ugandans to work out. Uh, that is the same thing that we've been doing uh, practically, but not in words. However, it's also important for the head of state to relate with the people that he is leading because um, close to 80% of our people are living under the poverty line. They don't have the luxury of a spacious place to work out from. And uh, as a young man, as a, a former boxer, I used to work out so much and I know there's only one fuel that will uh, make somebody work out, that is having food. Uh, it's important for the president to be reminded that the people have no food. The people are so hungry, so it is hard to work out. Are you saying that there have been no relief efforts at all on the part of the Uganda government in the, in, in the wake of the lo lockdown or is it just not getting to people quickly enough? What, what relief efforts have been made? Well, Uganda has uh, more than 150 districts, uh, but the food relief was announced to be uh, availed in only two districts, uh, that is Kampala and Wakiso. But even then, um, very, very few people have been reached in these districts. It is in these very districts that women are carrying their children to the police stations and demanding to be arrested so they can be fed. This is happening in the districts 
where food aid is supposed to have reached everybody. Wow. So it has been our call uh, upon the government to ensure that food relief reaches all corners of the country. And again, it has been our request that the president does not politicize this, that he allows all of us Ugandans to do the little that we can do. This is not a political issue. This is an issue of Ubuntu. We are Africans. There's absolutely no way I can have a second plate of food when my neighbor is starving. So all we ask of the president is not to, uh, not to charge us with attempted murder when we make an effort to help other Ugandans. It should be an encouragement. We should encourage all Ugandans to share with other people. It would be a shame for us not to have one death of corona, but having more than 10 deaths of people dying of hunger and torture in this corona pandemic. Yeah, I mean, actually, it's, it's not just in Uganda. That's what we're hearing all across uh, some parts of Africa. In Nigeria, we just did a report on CNN about people saying that they would rather die of coronavirus than being hungry. So it's certainly a continent-wide issue. And I would, um, you know, in late series, we'll definitely speak to someone in Uganda, to in the parliament, Uganda, Uganda government, to find out why people would be charged with attempted murder for um, trying to give relief efforts and, and fundraise. But um, yeah, so we'll come back to that issue, uh, definitely. And uh, let's go to something lighter. You released a song um, to raise awareness uh, in the early days, to raise awareness about coronavirus. Uh, can we ask you to sing a line from your song, which has been very successful and has had a, a over a million views and, and, uh, and uh, on, on YouTube. Can you, can you sing a line from this song and tell us what inspired it? Uh, sure, here we go. The bad news is that everyone is a potential victim, but the good news is that everyone is a potential solution. With those the lyrics, I don't want to forget my own song. <laughs> <laughs> the coronavirus is sweeping up a mankind. Everybody must be alert, it's a global pandemic, we can never take for granted. In my native language, it means everybody must be concerned and everybody must take charge. Right, fantastic. I, I love that. And um, it's such a catchy song. Uh, so what actually inspired it? I mean, why why did you want to make a song about, uh, about this, um, about coronavirus? I think everybody uh, or everyone of more conscious has got to raise their voice. Everybody that has a voice, everybody that has one or two or three or ten people listening to them to raise their voices to, to uh, create as much awareness about this pandemic. Our biggest weapon is knowledge, our biggest weapon is uh, awareness. So as an artist and as a leader, it was uh, uh, you know, it's my responsibility to create awareness. But this song came out of a casual conversation with my brother Nobi and me in the studio and uh, we were wondering what we can do as artists, as edutainers. We call ourselves edutainers because we educate my entertainers. So we, it took us maybe two to three hours to come up with the idea and get that song, song done. It is the shortest song that I've done in my life. <laughs> but I'm glad that uh, it was able to communicate far more. Excellent. So, um, you know, we've talked about what the government in Uganda is doing wrong and what is not yeah. going well. Is there anything, according to you, that they are doing right? I mean, is there anything that is working? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, the lockdown is working, I must say. And uh, the, the, you know, the guidelines that were put there by the Ministry of Health are working. I upload the Ministry of Health. I upload the government. Uh, our uh, numbers, our cases in Uganda are not what we have from the Ministry of Health. And, you know, and we have been able to discharge some, some people. So the lockdown is working. I only wish uh, we could uh, give uh, alternatives. I only wish we could think uh, further than the restrictions, and then we think of measures uh, of seeing our people go through this um, comfort. I think it's important to get the people of Uganda involved, let them understand that this is not about oppressing them, but it's about saving them. Let us show them that we actually care about them 
And uh, in times like this, this is when uh, the relationship between the leaders and the citizens is supposed to be solid. We're supposed to work together. So yeah, the government of Uganda has done some good, but we can certainly do it.